Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. This is Eric, and uh, we're going to be doing a series of videos. Uh, in these videos, we're going to walk through the process, and I've been asked about this uh, quite a bit actually, and I've looked at this particular process before of creating um, like storybook content. Uh, not just content, but actually creating the images that go in the storybook uh, with multiple characters, consistent characters, the backgrounds, and how to uh, integrate the characters into those backgrounds. So, as we all know, it's difficult just to render, do a single one-shot render of, uh, of a single storybook page and get exactly what you want. And so, uh, many people are resorting to you know, generating the backgrounds they want then they generate the characters they want, but how do you integrate those characters in there and make them look natural? How do, how do you make them look like they actually belong there? And so the point of these videos, or this first video, we're gonna go through doing the character creation and setup. Second video, we're gonna go through image integration, layering, and how to bring those characters in and then how to make them look natural, okay? Um, I don't know if there will be a third video. It really depends on how much content there is here. But uh, let's dive into this. And I'm going to show you some tricks and techniques that I have learned in this process to kind of get the results I want. So to get started off with, I'm going to be using an LCM uh, model. It speeds things up. Um, this particular one's called uh, TurboVision Superfast XL. Uh, you can look it up on Civit AI. Uh, I'll try to provide a link in the description. Um, we are going to use a negative prompt. Um, I try to keep it pretty mild. Uh, I'm going to scale this one down just a little bit. For the initial character creation, um, I, I like to set up a character for the for the basic character like front, back, side views. I actually have a a. Uh, style that I've created. I actually have two here. Um, character sheet, photorealistic, multiple angles, and character sheet, cartoon, multiple angles. Uh, we're going to be working with the cartoon prompt. So what this is, uh, we can come in here. I'll see if we can grab it here. I'll show you the prompt itself. And I'll leave this in the description as well. So, so what it is, um, I've emphasized front view, profile, side view back view at 1.5 to really try to make sure we get those views it helps with that character concept grid design sheet okay the ai knows what this is and it helps you lay that out animated cartoon layout and then here you put in the squirrely brackets prompt and if you read the instructions up here that means it'll take whatever's in your positive prompt and insert it here okay and then again, emphasizing surrounded by black background. I don't want anything else in there. Um, generating this, it will kind of light up the, where their feet are so you can see they're standing on something. But uh, overall, it creates this nice blank background, which will help in later steps. Okay, I'll try to put this in the description as well. Uh, the photorealistic one is not much different. Sorry, let's just jump into that. I know people are going to be asking about that. Um, come down here. And sorry, I don't know why that keeps exiting out. Um, the only difference is I'm putting multiple camera angles, left, right, back, uh, character design sheet, okay, professional photography layout, prompt, neutral lighting, ambient lighting, black photo studio background. So, and maybe if I get some time, I'll show you that one too. But right now, we're going to be working with the cartoon character sheet. Um, Obviously, you want to think your style. Like, you know, we can just say cartoon. You know, if I put in something like, I don't know, 12-year-old um, uh, boy with sandy blonde hair and a leather jacket. Okay, and, and we do that. It's going to insert it into this one right here. Um, because we're using an LCM model uh, to help speed things up, we're going to uh, use Euler A, and we're going to slide this over to 6 on the sampling steps. And the config scale, we're going to go all the way down to 2.5. If you go below 2, it starts to look like washed out. You know, I mean, what I mean by that is the, the colors don't pop. So I like to have it either you know, somewhere above 2, but below 3, or you know, 3 or below. So between 2 and 3. I'm going to do 2.5. Uh, 
For character sheets, um, I like to, mine to be uh, 16 by 9, so horizontal, okay, landscape, if you will. These settings will help speed things up, okay. We're not going to do anything else. I just want to get some characters out there so we can kind of start working with this. And I'll show you what we can do for artist reference, uh, which helps with things like hands and stuff like that. So let's just generate something here real quick, just so you can see what this looks like. Okay. So what we got here is a character sheet from hip, you know, kind of the midsection up. I actually want full body. So one of the things you can do in the prompt to help get that is describe something that the feet would do. So let's say uh, he's uh, wearing um, hiking boots, standing, oh, hiking, oh my gosh. Okay, hiking boots. So we'll hit render on that, generate on that. I'll show you what it looks like here. So here we got, it put in a bunch of extra stuff here. I normally don't get that, but so we got the front, we got a bit of a side turn and then the back view. And those are great. And this is a style you could actually go with. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna render out six more and uh, to see if I can get something without this stuff here. Okay, so we got some character sheets out here. Now let's go, there's only one here. I think, I, I mean, they got some good ones. Like uh, I think this one right here is not bad. Um, you threw in an extra side view, which, which is fine. That's totally cool. Uh, but this one right here turned out perfect. Um, I love the style. Uh, <laughs> love the boots. They're oversized. The aviator jacket looks great. You know, the overall style of that image is what I would love to see. Okay. I mean, obviously ahead of time, you're kind of thinking of the story you want to portray anyway. I'm just showing you how to integrate this. I don't necessarily have a story in mind. Um, we'll just kind of lay this out as we go and uh, see what comes out of this. And so I'm gonna, we're gonna save this image um, and we're gonna be using this for a couple reasons. Uh, we want consistency with the characters and there's ways to do that. And we'll also be able to use this to get uh, different poses and um, uh, utilize this to uh, create the character files. So uh, let's go ahead and save this. You know, something I should probably do is show you what I mean by uh, compositing or creating, um, uh, what do you call it, the character sheets and, and the transparency. So uh, let me bring up just a couple here. Um, so this is a, a character sheet I created. And as you can see, we got multiple angles, but this is a transparency, meaning um, all the space between is a transparency. I can cut this character out of this, lay it on another picture, and it would seamlessly be there. I wouldn't have to edit any of the edges or anything. And, you know, when it comes to the shading, that's a whole other matter. We'll get into that. And I've created, you know, a bunch of these for different characters. Okay. And Stable Diffusion does have a way of doing that, getting rid of that background so you have that. Uh, it's just one of the scenes I was creating, okay? Just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do. Oh yeah, and here's here's an example. So here's before, let me open this up here. So here's before, so I composited the characters on here. This is before I ran it through Stable Diffusion. Uh, there's that, and then here's after I ran it through while also doing some in-painting to get some other characters in the background. Uh, the little boy didn't turn out quite the way I wanted. It's not the style I wanted, but everybody else turned out great. Anyway, just thought I'd show that to you. Okay, so back to this. We've saved this file, okay? And now what we want to do is, well, let's see. We have the posing that we want now. So what we're going to do, we're going to be creating either more characters or um, we want to change the style of this character but I don't have to deal with rendering out a whole bunch of images just to get these same three poses, okay? So what we're gonna do is come down here to control net and we're going to drop that image in there. Oh yeah, I forgot. We can actually just drag it from right there to there, okay? We're gonna enable this. So we're in control net now and we're gonna enable pixel perfect. For this particular um, setup, we're gonna use, I think we're gonna use open pose. So let's make sure open pose sees this properly. 
So we're going to do uh, open pose full. Let's preview this, make sure it shows the proper positioning for each character. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, great. And now we can actually start adjusting the style. I mean, I love this, but let's say we want a specific artist style, you know, and there's lots of different artists out there. I could do a Google search. I'm going to go to my prompt generator here. I've integrated a option that we, you can now click artists and options reference here. And this allows you to come in and browse nearly 1200 artists. Okay. There was one artist in particular, um, but I don't think that's going to be the style that I want to fit in this one today. So we can actually browse through this and get some different styles here. Let's say we want I don't know, something a little like that right there. Gustav Tengren. That's not a bad style. I like that. Let's just grab that one for a second. I click the name, puts it down here in the artist's name so that uh, I don't forget it. We could go something a little more anime there. Um, some of these artists are just weird too. Richard Scary was one that was pretty cool. Um, that's an interesting one right there. So, I want to, ooh, those are cool, I like that. Yeah, you know what, ooh, let's see, um, yeah, I like that one, Ryan Stegman, let's just grab that one. So, what we're going to do is grab that name, okay, we're going to go back over to Stable Diffusion. We're just going to modify the prompt a little bit, we're going to go Richard Stegman style, and then we'll leave the rest of the description there, okay. And then we can come down here and we got the poses and the description here. Let's just see what that does. It should maintain these poses, thankfully. Um, so we're not having to guess or render out a lot of different ones. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I love that. Nice style. Should get about, we should be pretty consistent. I'm actually rendering more than just the one. So we're just going to do that one. So that's how you can get style. Like if there's a style you like, um, you know, go find the artist you like, and you can. And if it's been trained in Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion SDXL, or even the 1.5, 2.1 uh, style, then you can actually put that at the beginning. You know, integrating this other prompt if you want um, to get a consistent style. Okay. So we got this style now. Okay. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna leave. Um, Leave the pose there. Let's grab this one, bring this down here. And this one here is going to be used as a reference. Okay. We'll leave the artist's name up there, but we're also going to, and this is for character consistency. We're going to enable a second control net. If you don't have one, go to settings, go to control net. There's a little slider bar. You can add, you know, several if you want. I've got three enabled. Go to pixel, you know, use pixel perfect. We're going to, we're not going to do preview. And this one will just be set up as a reference. Reference is awesome uh, in this sense because it'll help bring over the same kind of you know, like the same jacket, pants, and everything. It'll help keep the character very consistent throughout. Okay. So now if I was to come over here to this one, let's disable, actually, let's not disable this one. Um, we're going to try and keep just three characters. We're going to reduce the control weight down. Um, the reason being, and we'll see what this does, uh, I didn't quite do this before, is it should at least maintain three characters, but because we're reducing its effect, it should allow us to do different poses, okay? So now we're gonna change this to, uh, from standing to kneeling, just to see if that, adjusting the control net will uh, allow us to change the overall pose while still maintaining three characters here. And we're gonna to need to reduce it more. If you reduce it too much, you're gonna get some weirdness, but let's just see what that does. There we go. 
So it's maintaining a pretty good consistency with the, um, where is it, the style. So we got, well, the pants are different. That one's a little bit different. We, what we may need to do is just disable the, this right here. I don't want to deal with that. Now we're going to go back to the style or the reference. Just make sure we have this up here. And I know this balance mode helps that too. We may adjust that, but I want to make sure we're getting consistent characters here. Typically when I'm adjusting or creating new poses, I don't use control net at all. I just let, I let it kind of throw at me whatever it's going to throw at me. Um, like that, uh, like there we go. I mean, the shirt's not green, but that, that doesn't really matter. We're not specifying green shirt here like we did in this one right here. So if we want that, we're going to need to actually specify that. So let's do this. I forgot. We don't, I don't like using and, so we're going to get rid of that. A leather jacket. Green t-shirt. Wearing hiking boots. I like that pose. I mean, that's great. Let's see if we can't get. Yeah, so we got the green shirt. Let's get rid of t-shirt. Let's just say shirt. I think with when you add, say t-shirt, it adds like <laughs> graphics to the front, of it, which, you know, honestly adds to the character, but whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. So we get front, we get uh, kind of a side view here turned away. That's not bad. So we can start saving these images, okay, and uh, getting what you want. So you get the idea. So the whole point is to maintain consistency. So you don't need the posing here. Oh, I mean, the poses here only for initially to get that set up. And you can change it if you want, but... To maintain the style, try to use this. Oh, let's, we can adjust this here. I want to adjust this down there. Let's see if that helps us maintain the... See, we're getting the same color boost. The colors aren't popping as much as here in these images, and that's okay. We'll see what that does when we adjust that slider. Yeah, we're losing it, so let's go the other way. Just want to try to get to where we are maintaining the, there we go. So we got blue pants, screen shirt, it's got a little graphic, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, well, we're losing the jacket. Jacket is supposed to be black. Did we say, oh, we did not specify color. That would help. And you can specify other things in the negative prompt. Like, we don't want that graphic on the t-shirt. Or you don't want other things like um, logo, backpack, then we just do that. Should help to eliminate that. Oh, the other thing that I was going to say is um, when you're doing different poses, sometimes it helps to not do the 16 by 9. Sometimes you want to do those one at a time. So what we're going to do, switch this over to a 4x5, which is a little more portrait. This gives the AI a little more headroom to work with. And you can get rid of some of these other things in here super easy. Like if you like that pose, then you can get rid of it. Just a little in-painting kind of thing. Like we'd in-paint that out right there. So anyway, you get the idea. We have the poses. You can go through, get whatever poses you want by describing that render out until you get it. But you get the consistent, uh, the consistent style, okay? And now what we want to do is I'm going to show you how to remove the background and turn this into something you can actually put on a, back, on, a, on a background. Actually, there is one other thing that I want to... Uh, delve into here a little bit uh, and that's getting different character emotions in different positions so 
I actually found a, let me see if I can find it here, a, uh, a grid that has different, let me see if I can find it here, facial poses. You know, it might be on my phone. Give me just a second. Okay, yeah, you're going to like this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, show you here. Come down over here, and we're going to replace, uh, actually not that, sorry. We're going to replace this. We, we're going to keep this one because we still want the same uh, uh, reference for style, okay, uh, for the character. With cartoon characters, it's this is great, okay. You might need to use IP adapter, like if you're using photorealism, but uh, for what we're doing here, we're going to grab, where to go here, there it is. Okay, so we're going to grab this over here, and what this is, is a clean character face sheet okay and for this one we are going to use um think about this i i tried it with open pose it works um i actually tried it with uh canny and soft edge and i'll show both i'll show those all to you i think i got better results with like canny but let's start with open pose we're going to do open pose uh face only we're going to go ahead and do a preview on this. It should show you the uh, different positions. You did a pretty good job on that one. Kind of messed that one. So those side profiles can get a little difficult. The one underneath the uh, thing here probably is messed up too. Um, we can try a different uh, open pose face. Not face only, but face. And see what that looks like. Uh, the, the other one that works really, really well is the, um, yeah, see that one's not bad. See, it kind of shows the side there like that. It uses some sort of an angled line to indicate the side. And uh, the fact that it's kind of looking down, but it's not still, some of these are going to be a little weird, but let's go over, let's try uh, DW Open Pose Full. This one actually does a pretty good job when doing whole bodies. And with this one, it, um, I think it kind of overdid it, but let's see what it shows here. Yeah, it doesn't like that one. Okay, so we're just gonna stick with open pose face, okay? Now, because we already got that, uh, we can now come up here and we don't need to describe the black leather jacket. Well, I guess the black, we could do black leather jacket or uh, green shirt, but we don't need the hiking boots or kneeling. So what we can do now is start describing emotions. Uh, very happy. And then because this here, we're gonna we're gonna just reduce. Oh, control weight needs to be up just a little bit, but less than one. We're just write point point eight. You can also reduce the ending step. So like we could do the one. Point o, which will help maintain that face position, but it sometimes will eliminate the emotion. So we, at some point, so basically at about halfway through, maybe 0 0.4 to 0 0.50% through, we can let the AI just kind of take over and, and give us the emotion we want. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to emphasize this too, since it's near the end of the prompt. And hit generate. Sorry, one thing I forgot was to switch this over to a 16 by 9 because uh, this image, I'm pretty sure, is a 16 by 9, so we're going to try that again. So part of my videos is uh, showing you when things don't work, too. I mean, not everything's perfect. So I kept getting these these images here. I'm like, what's going on? I'm trying to adjust settings or whatever. I don't know. I'm assuming this is the issue. I went, and looked, went back and looked at the resolution of the uh, image with the poses. And it's not 1024 by 576. It's actually 1024 by 617. This will mess up your images. So we're gonna try that again. Let's we'll see what that does. Let me just double check a few things here. Go to that one. So I kind of set everything back to default. So we're going to try that again, see if we can't get the um, character who we want. If not, what I'm going to do is switch over to Canny, because again, the open pose, yeah, I don't know why it's doing this. So let's go to Canny. 
This will mess with the hair a little bit because the original character here's hair is very, very short, so. But this should get us the grid that we're looking for. Again, I just don't like that um, it messes with it. So what we're going to do that should give us the grid. We're going to do we're going to reduce the control weight down to give it some freedom to mess with it, along with this here too, the ending control stuff. We just want the grid and the positions of the faces, um, and that should help. Now, as you can see, you can already see that we're getting positions, we're getting some uh, emotional expression on them. Uh, no, okay. Bring this back up. Let's try point eight. <clears throat> I know this may turn into a bit of a longer video, but I want people to see, you know, that sometimes it is a little difficult to get through and, and do this the way you want. Okay. Okay, that's better. That's much better. Seems pretty happy. Okay. We can change that and probably put very happy experience expression and add a like a number emphasis on that just to see what it does but the whole point of this right here is we would use this to um, when we're trying to create say a character for a very specific uh, scene and the face has to and like the character po with the pose you've got is facing a certain direction and you use IP adapter it helps IP adapter if you ha if the origin if the face you're using as the reference um, is in the facing in the same direction as well and has the expression you want because then you can use the IP adapter to apply that face to the character. Okay, so as you can see, get, if you can get a hold of a character sheet, I'll make this character sheet available if you want. Um, it does help when uh, putting this together. Okay, um, then you can cut these images out remove the backgrounds and uh, move forward okay nice uh, you know some of these obviously the, the, we're only using this for the face some of these you notice that the shirt the jacket is a little weird all we care about is the fact that the face is the same face with just different expressions so we come over here we can go angry And let's see if it brings out an angry face. Yeah, that's not bad. So these can be taken and upscaled, and you can fix the faces on them too. But uh, as long as you're using, the whole point is to make sure you're doing this, okay, um, to maintain the same character style, okay. You could even do a render of just one that's slightly higher res or whatever uh, to kind of help with that. But I think this, you get the idea with this. And we're dealing with storybooks. So the facial expression, you know, every, it doesn't have to be flawless. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see he's angry. Go in, uh, do, if you want to enable uh, a detailer on this, it'll go through and fix those faces. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll show you what it can do. Okay. So this is, I'm just, this is just to show you how good this can be when using a detailer. So here you got a whole bunch of angles with different angry emotions. Well, I shouldn't say different. I mean, they're not the same facial expression, but they're angry. Now, here's a quick tip that you need to remember when you're doing these. Let's say you like this face up here. Oops. and But in the story, in your page, maybe he's facing the other direction. to the Instead of to the left, he's facing to the right. Okay. Well, you got this one over here, you could use that one. But let's say you didn't have that one, okay? Cut this out, flip it. Take it into GIMP, flip it horizontal, or uh, yeah, on the horizontal axis. And uh, there you go, you got it. And I'll show you probably in the uh, next video I do when we get to that point, okay? But this does give you a lot of options uh, to work with. And as you can see, the character stays consistent uh, with the face. And you can take these and use these as an IP adapter, okay? Right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to, with the other character sheets, like the full body one, how to remove the, the background. Okay, so we're going to go over here. We're going to go back to one of our previous images here. 
let's go back to let's do this, just going into the image browser here grab one of those we're gonna grab uh, that this one right here I think is the one we want okay uh, so currently it has a background this one is gonna be a, a pretty easy one I think uh, some of them might react a little bit different it really depends on what you're doing that one's pretty good too Yeah, let's let's go with this one right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one and we're gonna send it over to and you do this with any of your character sheets okay if you get um, the character in a position you like uh, and it's got a good black background or at least a you know pretty consistent background. it doesn't have to be perfect like it can have a variance in shading on the ground so it shows that he's standing on stuff and you'll get that with like the photorealistic stuff but you take this you send it over to extras uh, favorites in paying extra sorry the big button okay pulls it over here we're not going to upscale this honestly these are for storybooks you don't need to upscale them and it can be done later too okay so all we're going to do we're going to leave these settings alone we're coming down here to the bottom where it says remove background now this is an extension um, that you can get come over here let me see if i can show you real quick uh it's remove background I want to see it was down a little ways. I'll put the I'll put the link in the uh, in the description as well. Uh, where is it? I want to oh there it is. So it's this right here. Stable Diffusion Web UI Rem BG Remove Background. Okay. Um, we'll click on that and. This should be it. Let's see. Find UI room extras tab. Yeah. So this is what helps you will help you remove the background. They don't use a very good example here. Um, a lot of this depends on how you have your character set up or your image. If there's something else you want to remove the background, it's good to have. If the what you want to main, stay in the background is really well defined. Okay. All right. So we come back here. Now there are several or a few different models to do this. Uh, a couple of standard ones. There's human segmentation. That's the one we're probably going to use. Cloth segmentation, um, silhouette, uh, general use, and anime. So actually the anime one will work on this, but I want to try the human segmentation one. What this does is it looks at what's in the picture and identifies the person, creates a segmentation mask, and then just removes everything else. Okay. We uh, This is a PNG. So one of the things, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning. I apologize for that. You need to have your uh, images that you're saving set up as a PNG. And I think by default, Stable Diffusion uses this. I like to switch mine over to JPEGs because they don't take up as much space. And I'm not necessarily doing this all the time, uh, removing backgrounds and creating transparencies. So make sure you're saving them as PNGs. Come down here, select the human segmentation. And we're going to select this option here that says Alpha Matting. Gives you some options here. We can leave these as default. I think the default settings, especially with an image as simple as this, should turn out fine. So we're just going to hit generate. And up here you can see it's processing. This does not take very long. Uh, should pop the image up fairly quick here. Oh, it took out everything. Okay, so I didn't like that one. Let's try the anime one. Again, you're going to have to experiment with this, depending on the image you're, you're putting it out there. Let's see if this one does it better. There we go. Perfect. So what this did, you can kind of see how it's blue all the way around, is it removed the background around the character. These are cartoons that were, the, the human segmentation, I guess, works better on the realistic uh, images. But if you want to check the transparency, open it up, and you can kind of see how, see how it's scrolling back behind it. And these are cartoons, they're going to have a little bit of a white edge on them anyway. So it did a great job turning this into a transparency. So we'll use that later on to put into the background image, okay? Now, something to take note of is you can upscale this here, okay? Um, there are options to upscale this. I wouldn't do more than twice um, because when you're putting these into the images for the storybooks, they don't need to be high res. They're storybooks, they're low detail anyway, especially children's books. But if you want to, just put this at two, 
And as for the upscaler, I really like using the 4X Ultra Sharp. I know there's some that are designed for anime and all that kind of stuff. This one works really well, it's pretty quick. We're gonna leave it on the remove transparency as well. So you can see that it works in concert with that. And it shouldn't take very long either. This, doing the upscales here, I don't really like uh, the extras upscale. Uh, one of the reasons why when you're dealing with realistic looking stuff is it has a tendency to kind of smudge stuff, blur stuff, it, it reduces the the amount of detail. It's just, a, it's all about just getting the image bigger, you know? So now, as you can see, you know, we, it upscaled it. It actually does look sharper with this, so it did a pretty good job. Hands look fine, he's got bald fists, that's, that's okay too. And uh, everything looks pretty consistent. I would use these. And just to show you that it is upscaled, you know, it kind of it went from uh, 1024 by whatever to 2048. So my, my monitor is a 4K monitor. So this is showing way off the screen over here. So definitely upscaled it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for right now. In the next video, we're going to show you how to utilize these. We're going to be utilizing... Um, GIMP as a software to be able to put these into a scene and then blend those in the scene so they actually look natural. Okay, so I appreciate you uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something, uh, got some tips from it, and uh, get ready for the next video where we show you how to integrate this into an image to get like the example I showed you before where the, uh, the characters actually look like they belong in the image. Uh, let's pull that up again just so you can see in this image. Nope, not that one. I think it was the next one. That one right there. Okay. Where by being able to blend it, it did change the original character, but it's more in style with what I was looking for. Uh, the kid I would work on a little bit better, a little bit more, but in doing what we did, we added, we were able to get the drop shadows in a little bit. I mean, everything's low detail. Again, we're talking about children's books. They're all low detail, but it does blend it in so it makes it look like it actually belongs there. This character didn't have the shadow on her dress, and it was nice because it added the shadow that kind of comes back down from this wall. I don't know how the AI knows that, but it does, and it does a good job with it. So stay tuned to the next video, and we'll see you all later.